Well, we need to install one more piece of algebra before we can wrap up our last few types of surface integrals. So it's called a parametric surface. And if you recall what we've learned about um, parametric so far is we've been using them to, des uh, to design curves. So we could have the curve y equals x cubed and then the parametric or vector version of it would be t comma t cubed and then somebody has to provide us information about these t boundaries we need to know where to begin where to stop frequently we started at t is zero but it's not an all the time requirement and then we could generalize this for a curve If you have a function, y equals f of x, then r of t, the vector or parametricized version, is t comma f of t. But again, somebody has to provide us some information related to that variable. So this makes a curve. We are making a curve, a path. And these are two-dimensional, but we also saw it could be three-dimensional. There were also exceptions. So another type was a circle. This particular circle has a radius of, of a and a times cosine t, a times sine t. And if we, we could go 0 to 2 pi for the entire circle, we could go 0 to pi for half the circle, um, but somebody has to give us how much of the circle we need to have. This is the way to take a two variable problem and boil it down to a one variable, t being our variable. So now I said surfaces. So far, this is just a quick little power review of curves. So let's suppose we take a surface and the surface is z equals g of x, y. So in our curves, we replaced x with t, and then the output became the function of t. Well, I have two inputs now. So you could actually use x and y as your inputs. I'm not going to do that in this little segment. But the way it's defined in many cases is the way it's written here. Um, we'll call it a two variable input. Remember, this has three variables in total, two inputs and an output, x, y, and z. So we're gonna call the x input a u and the y input a v, not vectors. These are values we're inputting. And then the z component is that function uh, where you plug in x and y into g. But again, Somebody has to give us some guidelines for how much of this surface would you like to look at? So you could draw it several ways. Sometimes it's just simply called a domain, um, the inputs to do, but you're going to be provided that. So remember, this is a surface. It could look like a paraboloid. It could look like a, uh, a sphere. It could look like You know, sort of like a sinusoidal sheet, um, some sort of surface in three dimensions. But we boiled it down to a two variable problem, boiled down to a two variable problem. So if I give you, for example, that z equals 3x plus y squared, we could write this in parametric form. Oh, I want you to think of it. What would it look like if I replaced all of the x's with u and all of the y's with v? What would the z look like given this function? This is where you would use that pause button and write it down before I say it. Okay, enough time here. So this says z is equal to 3x plus y squared. So that would be 3 times the x input u plus the y input squared. Somebody will have to give us boundaries for u and v. I'm not gonna write it this time. 
but that's part of the puzzle that we're building towards. Remember, I'm filling in an algebra blank. We're going to use this to take something that has three variables and boil it down to only two to simplify matters. Double integrals are easier than triple integrals, my students. Let's do one more, um, or two more maybe. Z equals uh, square root nine minus x squared minus y squared. Why don't you take a shot at that one? And then one more, z equals x squared. And take a shot at that one. Hit pause. All right, we're back from the pause. Input u and v, output square root 9 minus u squared minus v squared. This three variable surface written now with only two variables, even though there are three components, there's only two variables in here. Somebody has to define what are the boundaries for u and v, but here we're just looking at a simple algebra conversion. All right. So what'd you do for this one? X is the input. Z is clearly the X input squared, but there is no Y value. Well, if you wanted to, you could actually say that there is no Y value. You could add zero Y's to this if you wanted to. So Y could still be input but there are no y's in this z component. The reason this seems so strange is because we think of this as a two-dimensional picture, but remember what, the, uh, what we studied earlier in the semester called cylinders. You, know, you have this parabola shape, but it extends forever in the third dimension. And the third dimension would be y in this case. That would be x, and that would be z. So the parabola is still there, but, but the third dimension is our y variable. And again, somebody has to tell you, well, how far do you want it to stretch? From 0 to 2, from 0 to 3, that would have to be provided. One more um, little sample here, basic example, and then I'm going to show you a more interesting case. What if I gave you that R of UV is equal to the following? U cubed plus sine V is the first component. And then U and V are the second and third components. What would it look like if we converted it to the rectangular or XYZ form? Well, if you think about it, looks like Y and Z become the inputs, and X is where all the interesting part of the function takes place. This could actually be X equals Y cubed plus sine of Z. Not that we will have a need for something that creative or interesting, um, what we could spend a lot of time in a call it pre-calculus setting studying the algebra of these surfaces. One more example, because I led with showing you that there are types of parametrics where you don't just have a function that's evaluated. There are types where it's not just a function. So let's suppose you were asked to convert this one to rectangular. to x, y, and z form. Well, I can see here that x is equal to 2u cosine v, and that y is equal to 2u sine v, and then z is equal to 4u squared. 
we're going to play our little substitution game here. And since this is just an example to show you that it's possible to do something, we're not going to actually have time to truly exercise our muscles here. So this is more for just showing you that there is some more unusual cases. Um, X squared plus Y squared. I just want to say it because I see sine and cosine hanging out here. That would be equal to 2U cosine V squared plus 2U sine V squared. And if I multiply that through for U squared cosine squared of V plus 4U squared sine squared of V. And if I factor out the 4U squared, I'm going to have our very famous trig identity. That's right, it's equal to 1. So I end up with x squared plus y squared is equal to 4u squared. Well, wait a second. Look at this. This says that z is equal to 4u squared. And by substitution, that means I end up with z is equal to x squared plus y squared. This is the paraboloid vertex at the origin that we have used so, so many times this semester. Now, we won't develop in this little video series how we might convert from rectangular to the parametric. But I want to show you the reverse because undoing the mess is not as bad as creating the mess, it turns out. All right, one calculus trick with this coming up soon.